please set this video to 4K even if you don't have a 4K screen. Lots of this footage is fast moving and if you don't set it to 4K, YouTube sometimes makes it look a blurry mess. Cheers. Previously on C90 Adventures. So, up until now on the journey from Alaska to Argentina, I had been sat on my faithful motorcycle Steed 90 for 35,000 miles and just shy of three years. We'd ridden through 11 countries and we're at the end of Colombia, just about to enter country number 12. So previously in Colombia, I'd been grumpy due to the rain. I'll just have to be blurry. Uh... So I'm at the border with Ecuador, I was just about to do a little bit to camera, and it's raining again! Again! It's all it's doing. Just... Thank you. There's water inside my waterproof camera, <laughs> which is how much it's been raining. Right. Let's do the border crossing! I rode 90 to the checkpoint, walked inside, and got all the paperwork for me and my bike in order. There's no footage of this, partly because it wasn't very interesting, but also because on the way into the building I got distracted by something. With the immigration paperwork for me, and the customs paperwork for my motor boob, we changed countries and we're now in Ecuador. The tarmac was smooth, well the bits that weren't covered with crops that the farmers were drying, and it was good riding for me and any other biker that was on this road. Plus, with the sun out, I was once again enjoying the randomness that a slower motorcycle brings. <laughs> power rage! <laughs> lots and lots of power rage. Some people say Ed March found six miles of power rage on the side of the road this morning. What we know is. He doesn't have to buy a drink for a week. <laughs> yes. My 90, onwards. Me and my newly acquired beverages continued our journey south, and actually so far south that I lost my southern hemisphere virginity. Yeah, that's right. This was my first time south of the equator. I found a suitable tourist attraction to cement this occasion. Finally made it to the southern hemisphere. Me. And I accosted a random stranger to use as a cameraman because I'd lost my tripod. Like this. Ooh, top tip. When using random people to film things, tell them to hold the camera still and count to three. Okay, one, two, three. I should probably tell them to count in their head. Two. Yeah. Somebody's got ground clearance. Quite a lot of ground clearance, actually. So Monster Truck 90 and I were nearly ready to head off. All that remained was a keepsake photograph of this occasion, with the front wheel in the southern hemisphere, the rear wheel in the north, and the large column behind to give context to the photo. You're all immature and childish, by the way. There is nothing funny about a rocket ship. I extracted myself from underneath 90's impressive ground clearance, and hit the road to discover what life below the equator looked like. While of course paying special attention to make sure I didn't discover what life below the tarmac looked like, due to missing manhole covers. We headed away from the tourists and into the countryside. The scenery initially started as rolling hills, before getting more and more pronounced and mountainous. And of course, with terrain like that in the distance, it'd be criminal not to ride to it. Riding around, happy and free The person on the saddle has a massive willy C90 C90 The terrain got smoother The mountains turned to hills Ed had bought out his engine And had the power to thrill The fastest thing on the road He ate distance for lunch he was overtaking vehicles, but still got done by a Suzuki Ignis. Fucking Ignis! His singing was terrible, so we went back to normal voiceover. 
We rode through the very pretty countryside for quite a while before eventually ending up in a town and riding alongside a train track and me thinking, why ride alongside the train track? This looks like it could be quite fun and a good chance to experience something off the bike. So I bought my ticket, set up the GoPro and boarded the train to try and get an immersive and professional shot to help show you drop my water bottle, damn it! The train started its journey through the town before taking me back out into the dramatic landscapes that Ecuador has to offer. And they were dramatic. Often the camera finds it very difficult to convey the scale of these places, but if you look right down there at the bottom of that valley you'll see, oh no, a rocker in that shot. Anyway, I did actually manage to, no, a busher in that shot. Gah! And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what happens when you're on a mode of transport that you can't stop, and you try and convey the journey to an audience, but also try and enjoy it for yourself. The train continued its unchangeable journey, and I got to experience the majesty of the surroundings a few more times, with a few more close-ups of bushes, before the scenery properly opened up. Eventually, the train made its way to the base of the mountains, through the bottom of the valley, and to our only stop at this very remote village. Now, once in the village, you can get off the train and walk around and discover interesting things like this donkey, and also I can help show you what's so special about this railway. You see, trains don't like steep slopes, and this terrain isn't much off vertical. So while most of the tourists were watching the traditional dance spectacle put on by the locals, my inner engineer was instead focused on the solution to get the train down the mountain known as the Devil's Nose. The train actually zigzags down it. It stops just before the end of the track, avoiding plunging everyone to their death. Oh no! And then they switch a set of points, the train reverses direction, and it goes down the other section of track. But don't worry, the train won't derail on the points and send everyone plummeting to their death. Oh my god! because the points are meticulously maintained. Oh my God, that's terrifying. Why, why do I have to look at these things? Anyway, on a related note, I do have a complaint. If this railway is going to run and not meet Western safety standards, can it please go back to the old trains where you sat on the roof of this sort of converted bus thing? That looks amazing. Once I finished appreciating the scale of the engineering achievement here, I rejoined the crowd and watched the traditional dancing. And I did actually enjoy it. Although I felt that the blonde woman could have put a bit more effort into learning the routine. The show was a simple but enjoyable affair and a welcome reminder of simpler times and how you don't need the latest tech to live and you can often just make do with what you've got. This was again perfectly displayed by our train arriving and even though they can't afford a sports centre, that doesn't stop the local synchronised swimming team from practising. With the train in the station, it was time to board it for the final time, head back to the town, get on 90 and ride the rest of Ecuador. And this time I was going to use the GoPro to get a super professional and immersive. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end, and this was the case for my train journey and another day in Ecuador. Found a hotel for the night and got some rest, ready to continue my journey the following day. Sometimes this country never ceases to amaze me. Somebody cut off my number plate off of the back of my motorcycle and put it in my front basket. And the, uh, and the cut marks on the elastic are very fresh. It's a weird place, and there's a dog licking my motorcycle luggage.
Here I am adventuring in the middle of nowhere. Um, where is the road going? <laughs> where the hell am I going? Cuenca! Looks like there's been a massive landslide. Okay, gracias! Walking route is actually a mountain goat route. Nobody here is going to be making a new road. Must be a bit annoying. Of course, you've got to be careful when treating Ecuadorian roads like a racetrack because some of these corners are not friendly. Okay. Oh, and sorry about the camera angle, guys. When I was leaning into the corners to take them faster, I forgot my body tilted forwards quite a bit. So you're just going to have to deal with a bit more of the road and a lot more detail of just how completely shagged my handlebars are. And as per the comments from the previous videos, why am I carrying keys for two cars and quite a few sheds all the way from Alaska to Argentina over three years? I don't know. Anyway, time to pull over and check the sat-nav and oh, balls, I've run out of Ecuador. Oh well, I guess I should do a border crossing and go to Peru. Well, that's a shame, I was actually enjoying myself here. Well, I better carry on, I guess. Ecuador, you've been awesome, but it's now time for country number four of South America. And it was a fairly standard border crossing really, with nothing much to report. I just got a couple of stamps in my passport, and 90 got her normal customs inspection. Most of their interest towards me is normally just intrigue about a grown man carrying so many cuddly toys, or my visually shambolic motorcycle. And if they do happen to have bad intentions towards me, a quick no Nintendo Espanol and a smile very quickly makes them think he's really not worth the hassle and his bike tells me he probably couldn't pay a bribe even if he wanted to. Carry on mate, I'll wait for one of the rich BMW riders to come along. So I'd just ridden 700 miles through 400 mile long Ecuador and was now facing 1,200 mile long Peru. I didn't know my exact route, but it was probably going to be something like this. So with the border crossing done, I was now in Peru and ready to get some miles done and explore. Oh look, a snake! Quick! I better uh, pull over and film it so I can capture the true majesty of nature. That, uh, let's ruin that. Is he? I think he's still alive. Yeah, he is! Get on, snake! I don't know what you're made of, but carry on. <laughs> right, well I'm going to leave them to it I think. Once I'd descended down from the mountains and was in the main flat area, I discovered that Peru might be somewhere I was going to enjoy, because terrible vehicles appeared again. And they might look crap, but these trikes actually hump along at a fair old speed. And if you thought the Wanksin 125 in the last video was good, may I present to you the Wanksin Cargo Motorcycle Trike. And this next shot had to be a quick drive-by, because if I'd have hung around too long, there would have been a trouser accident. There is a Wanksin tuk-tuk. I need to own one. Anyway, enough of this silliness. It was time to get some fuel, South American style, and head off again. The geography had definitely changed. Gone with the mountains, and now it was flat expanses, with the occasional sand dune trying to creep out onto the road. This was the zone of dunes or for the Spanish speaking, the Zona de Junus. No, really, that's actually what it's called. And if we're using the exact terms for where I was, what happened was I left the Zona de Junus and I entered the Zona de Junus and trees, before eventually entering the Zone de Elevel Well Flat, 
I'm just kidding, of course, that's not his proper name. The Zona de Mucho Flato went on for quite a while. In fact, nope, that's wrong as well. It went on for a very, very long time. So yeah, geography. But it wasn't all open expanse. There was the odd town, and even a traffic light to give me a break from 90s unchanging and relentless engine noise. And while towns and cities aren't my thing, I'll take any excuse to experience the Tito bus, because everything's better with tits. Even a bus. Oh, and speaking of twin peaks that make me happy, two hills had appeared. It looked like the scenery might be getting interesting. Over the next four hours of 6,127 RPM, the hills started encroaching and got closer and closer to the road before eventually forming a valley around me. I was now in one of the natural wonders of Peru, known locally as the Canyon del Pato. But if you're going to keep doing these miles, yes, yes. eventually you're going to have to stop for some refreshment. Although, I say stop, 90 and I have been together so long now that stopping or hands are entirely optional. And I say refreshment, but whatever yellow energy drink is, had a bit of a kick to it. No, oh, whoa! Jesus! What the fuck is it that? Oh, this is very... With the rain just starting to fall where I was, it was time for 99 to try and get over this mountain as quickly as possible. <laughs> Damping on my rear shocks. Not as good as that, was it, lads? Oh, my hair feels good. Right, first things first. Air filter. Oh. As I headed towards the sun and started pulling ahead of the rain, it was apparent that we'd beaten it. Eventually the mountain pass finished and it was back to flatter ground. With the amazing canyon and off-roading behind me, it was time for normal service to resume and over the next three days, 90 and I enjoyed the randomness and variety of 600 miles of Peru. That wasn't supposed to happen. What are you doing? Well, at least I can check where that oil leak is coming from. <laughs> right, everywhere. But, it's lubricating the chain pretty well. Right, 90, better pick you up, I suppose.
course, the advantage of going back into a town is that you do get to see things like this. Of course, I enjoy seeing things like that, but I'm fairly sure the driver of this tuk-tuk just sees fuck all. And some very pretty snow-covered mountains appeared, which the sun was obscuring their view, and if you had a camera crew you'd probably wait until the sun moved to get the perfect shot. I just, uh, I just cover the sun with my finger. There we are. Nailed it. I was once again out of the towns, and very much in the middle of nowhere, in the high altitude plains, with no one around for miles. Lovely. While I am riding one-handed to film the scenery, there's a time and a place for both hands on the handlebars. And why would you be here? There's nothing. Eventually we descended down from the plains to a rather concerning smell of smoke in the air and ash falling from the sky. Turns out it was nothing to worry about though, it was just this farmer growing some fire. After a while the smoke started to thin out and was replaced by mist and I was once again back on the highway, getting some miles done. And I carried on through the mist, which kept getting thicker, and thicker, and thicker, and yeah, I don't really know what's in front of me anymore. This just in, the Wanks in 200 has been released, which actually contains 75 more Wanks than the Wanks in 125. And I actually had a close up look at these tuk tuks. Turns out what they are is they're the front half of a motorcycle and the back half of two motorcycles and they're just chain drive. So it's got two swing arms on the back and a really long chain to drive it. They're actually incredibly simple and it means you can get parts for them because they're just made of bikes. Oh and in case anyone is wondering, yes I am tempted to guide a wanks in tour where we fly out to Peru and buy some of these and just uh, generally hate our own existence for two weeks and I can confirm they are just as terrible to ride in as they are to look at. I really am going to own one of these at some point. Oh, and if you absolutely have to have the most amount of Dave in your tuk-tuk, I will find you the Davist tuk-tuk. So uh, yeah, for the next day I just rode across a sheet of sandpaper. It was a good thing I was turning left towards Nazca, because you're not allowed to go... Ah uh, yes, South America, free of the oppressive clutches of the Western world, where you're even allowed to go threes up on a motorbike with no helmets, if you're okay with the level of danger. But with the memories of off-roading alone on cliff edges still fresh in my mind, I decided to do something much safer and boarded a South American light aircraft. It's all about the payoff for me. The safest place for a ship is in harbour, but that's not where ships are supposed to be. So you've got to take some risks to have fun, and I'm happy with that. Other people, not so much. I was now flying over the Nazca lines, geoglyphs created 2,000 years ago that can only truly be appreciated from above. Since the first detailed study in the 1940s, mystery has surrounded them. The level of detail from such an ancient culture is fascinating. Like, how did they manage to perfectly replicate a thumb in the bottom right of this shot? The sheer variety and amount of all these different drawings was amazing. Like, there's this bird that has been run over, and then there's like, oh no, that's a... That's a black... Oh no, no, that's the road. Oh, but there's a... Oh no, that's some scaffolding. But oh, no, look! There's this tree thing. And then uh, next to it, there's a frog with forks for legs. And then there's this man that has done all of the drugs. 
Eventually though, it was time to leave the flat expanses and the pretty lines and head back to the mountains and carry on the journey. All that was left to do was for me to finish this section by filming the plane landing on the God, God damn it, random person 358. Ah well, there we are, we landed. Cheers, buddy. And you've got to do the typical tourist thing of buying a sticker. Quanto es? Yes. Yes. Uh, the ancient Nazca people had been quite busy and made a lot of lines, but they'd also built some pyramids, so I decided to go and investigate them on land this time. First mode of transport was a dune buggy, which I definitely didn't pick because I thought the company name was edanustoursperu.com. Oh, and in completely unrelated news, I'm thinking of setting up an OnlyFans website to help raise more money for this YouTube channel. However, the dune buggy picked up some other tourists and the ride got decidedly slow. Because for some reason, your average tourist doesn't like being bounced around and turned upside down in the back of a sand rail. So I decided to hire something that would allow me to travel at the pace that I wanted to. Oh, hello, Mr. Quad Bike. off to the best start because the quad bike actually broke down just as we pulled into the petrol station to get some fuel but it did give me the opportunity to be a bit sneaky Honda yeah. Yamaha, Kawasaki. Uh, Honda 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 uh, C90 ah, 90. Lineal. motor normal yes yeah yeah oh, yeah. yeah it's a mass pequeña yeah. uh, I can speak English uh, 135 cubic centimetre ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. but I like it for riding around the world because it is very simple. Yeah. Sim and, yeah. you know, it is very easy to work yeah, if it yeah, breaks. Yeah, yeah. Uh, exactly. BMW, KTM. Yeah, yeah, if you yeah. are in Mongolia and you have a problem, <laughs> you, nothing. Okay, cool. It also gave my guide the opportunity to ask yeah. me, where were we going? First stop, Kawachi. Uh, I don't know the place. Kawachi? Kawachi, I don't... Pyramid? Oh yeah. Next, next stop? Uh, the um, aqueduct. Aqueduct? Yeah. Aqueduct in Kawachi, okay? Uh, I think so, yeah. And then just ride the okay. sand or something. And once the guide was out of visual range, it was time to be sneaky. Hehehe. <laughs> This is what happens when you take an engineer on one of your quad bike tours. He sees where the throttle stop is and while you're not looking, he removes it. So now he has a full power quad bike. Situational report because uh, sit rep filmed on sit rep filmed on the GoPro uh, because I've lost my main camera. It's bounced out of my pocket for the first time ever. Uh, so the guy who I was following has gone off to look for it. Um, I was following him, but slower, uh, so I could do a more thorough search. But we've got to a split, and I can't remember which way we go. I've tried both, but neither look familiar. Basically, I've just got to stand here in the middle of a desert. And um, as long as he finds my camera, actually, that's all I care about. I've got enough fuel to get to a town, which I think is that way. Maybe. Um, 
And this is the thing with filming. The camera can be replaced, and so can all my gear, but my footage cannot. Which means if I didn't find this camera, because it'd been sloppy, I'd have lost about a week's worth of footage because I'd been lazy with the backups. So I would have had to fly back up to see the Nazca lines and ridden all the way back to the Canyon del Pato so I could show you what it was like. I really needed to find this camera. My guide returned empty handed, so we went through where I had it last before we set off again riding through the desert to try and find the priceless footage. Although first he asked me to check all my pockets again. I'll go one more, so no, 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 no. Not there. No, 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 no. Fucking get in! Ah, oh, you mu- does it still work? Is it warm? Ah, oh, tough cams, I love you. How far did you bounce? Right. Let's put you in the fucking pocket, complete with the button closed. Let's ride like an absolute twat to go and meet my tour leader. It was about four meters off. Ah, oh. oh, I don't give a shit. Ah, oh, thank God, I don't have to go over that plane again. Yeah, the problem with riding this quad bike was that when I was sat down, the GoPro was framing the shot correctly. But every time I stood up, it started facing downwards. So most of this footage was unusable. If you've been affected by this, please send a complaint email to I would like to buy Ed a stabilized camera gimbal that always keeps his GoPro horizontal at c90adventures.co.uk. Thank you so much for helping me find my camera. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Can you put here? Yeah, no, it's, it is, it's, it's safe. It, it cannot, I, I don't know how, but for, for, for three years, every day has been in that pocket. <laughs> and then today, it doesn't make sense. Uh, Inca cola? Ooh, Ed March top tip. If you're gonna go on a quad bike tour or something like this, pay extra to go as just a group of one because then your guide will probably let you open the taps a bit more because you won't have a slower rider in your group. Also, if you're solo, when you go there, there's nobody else with you. So you often get amazing places like this pyramid that was made in the year 1 AD to enjoy all by yourself in complete serenity. Oh. <laughs> uh. That ruined the moment. But this Inca Cola is lovely. So, after a bit more adrenaline, it was time for my dusty desert adventure to come to an end and I headed back into town to see 90 once again and head off into the mountains again. And see I was very dusty, and see in the edit that I was very Jesus. But before I headed off into the mountains, I needed to get some supplies, because I was about to do 350 miles across very barren landscapes, so I had to take this seriously. Oh no, Choco Bum. See, Choco Bum. Ah, see. Yeah, that's it. Oh, see. This is. See? Huh? So, okay. Cool, right. One of them, whatever the fuck that is. 
Dos y, soles está. Uh, ¿Esto? No. ¿Qué uh, flavor? Queque. Queque. Uh, dos que, queques. Yeah. ¿Para dónde te vas? Ah, uh, just a uh, poquito a uh, Cusco. Just. ¿Solo? Solo, sí. Dieciséis, cincuenta, diecisiete, dieciocho, diecinueve, veinte. Gracias. Gracias. Really actually put shopping in my shopping basket. And now Ah, sí, yeah. El, um, yeah, es um, mexicano. Ah, okay. So, mexicano, Canadá. <laughs> ¿De qué país? Huh? ¿De qué país? Uh, Inglaterra. You do not want to kickstart. Come on, 90. Argentina, here we go. So 90 and I were definitely having fun on these mountain roads. So much so, in fact, that she nearly threw herself down this cliff as she fell off her side stand. Well, I've been here for about two hours trying to get the bike going because it just died. Um, never seen this fault before. Uh, my lithium battery, if I have it connected to the bike, it doesn't run. There appears to be a short circuit inside it. So it only runs without a battery. <laughs> if it has a battery, it stops. Um, I've uh, I've jerry-rigged the bike so that it doesn't actually use any of the uh, internal wiring or the battery. It just it supplies its own voltage and goes. Um, I just yeah, I eat my own hair. I just hope that this system that I've made can regulate its own voltage. Otherwise, if it starts flying through the roof, it could blow up lots of things. So um, yeah, going to keep the headlight bulb on to try and sink the voltage down. But yeah, I'm in the middle of nowhere and I've got about 70 miles to go before I get to my hotel. So, um, not going to make it before dark now. Ugh. Not such a fan of the lithium battery anymore. Right, I've got to pack my bike up because it looks like a bomb's hit it. So yeah, look, hot wired bike. Runs, and the second that I connect the battery earth, I'll fuck off. So 90 somehow fixed herself, 
And like I said on the side of the road, we now had to ride into the night to the hotel with my choco bum covering the headlight. And I say hotel, it was a sort of lodge thingy in a national park with no water and no heating. But I did get to bring 90 inside for the night, so it's not all bad. And yes, no water, so my face is still the colour of the previous day's quad biking. <coughs> Well, I'm above 4,000 metres now. I don't know what temperature it is, but it's the first time since Canada that when I breathe in, my nose hurts. It's uh, very, very cold. So, uh, another cold day's riding. So what a difference a day makes. Quite a few things had changed. The sides of the roads now had ice on the curbstones, which formed very pretty patterns. Someone had put earrings on the cows and someone tied the donkeys together. Eventually though, 90 and I stopped climbing and we reached the top of the mountain and were now on the semi-arid plains of the Andean mountains. And there was a new type of wildlife too, which was proving quite difficult to film. Partly because everything kept running away from me, and partly because my camera was being moronic. Focus them, fuckface. I should point out that you're only actually seeing a very small snippet of me and I'm not actually this angry in real life, but don't worry, it won't happen again on the next trip. Because I'll pack a better camera. I rode away from that joke as quickly as possible and carried on my ride. The scenery here was very striking, as was the temperature difference between being in the sun and the shade. Anywhere the sun didn't hit, there was ice. But the cold didn't slow me down, I just put on another t-shirt underneath my jacket and carried on riding. 340 miles on this day. Well, I'd finally made it to the town of Cusco, which was very pretty and a very nice place to look around, but also to leave my bike and luggage in a hotel and go and do some adventuring on foot. The previous night I had paid for this trip, which included an entry ticket and a bus ticket to the start of this railway, which you had to walk alongside for about three hours, because the only option was to walk it or spend a lot of money on the train ticket. I went for the walk. Yeah, I've definitely been in South America too long, because this section of the track has actually been washed away and the tracks are exposed and I don't even notice it. have words with the person that I bought this tour of. Just been walking for two and a half hours through the remote jungle and uh, yeah, buses. <laughs> it's just because it's got a bus. I'm not really a fan of walking. That's why we invented the motorcycle. Eventually I got to the town where I'd be staying for the night along with everybody else and all of their rubbish. Worst carnival float ever. And I found the hotel that I'd been booked after discounting all the ones that obviously weren't mine. That's definitely too posh, can't afford there. And once in my hotel, I read the very informative medical information in the lobby before going up to my room and getting an early night. And the reason for the early night was because I had to get up at four in the morning in the pitch black to go and climb steps. A lot of steps. But eventually the sun rose and allowed me to see Machu Picchu. And another Red March top tip is if you don't get the bus in with everybody else, and you also get there before the buses, then you get to enjoy these places with a lot more tranquility. Yeah, you might have to do something like walk up 5,000 steps, but it is worth it. And, you know, doing the steps is no problema. The way that the natural and man-made fuse together so well here is quite impressive, and where I was now at the start of the Amazon basin, the water was now flowing again, rather than being frozen. And the accuracy to which they got the stone square and to sit was also quite impressive. Although the thing I didn't realise was that Machu Picchu is only about 500 years old, 
which means that the bedroom that I grew up in is actually older than these ruins. Although the view from my bedroom wasn't this good. And all good things must come to an end, and eventually all of the tourists turned up and flooded the place. It was like Larmageddon. And like the amount of puns being too much for you, the amount of tourists was too much for me. So I hopped on one of those buses and headed to Rainbow Mountain. And excellent news, I had a camera crew again. I should take a video of you. And it says record. I know. Recording. But whenever possible, I'd always operate the camera myself, just to keep things professional. I did not. So now I'm moving a bit. Normal service was resumed though, and it was back to me in my monopod. And it's a monopod, not a selfie stick. Paris Hilton has a selfie stick. I am an artiste. And yes, my hair was getting quite ridiculous now, and I was tempted to get a haircut. But apparently it's quite fashionable in Peru. And talking of animals that look fabulous. Love your earrings. Well, it was now time for my penultimate tourist attraction visit to come to an end. I had one last look around at the magnificent geography here before getting the bus back to Cusco to be reunited with 90 and to continue my journey south. My miles in Peru were running out and so was my list of things to see. 90 and I were back on the Andean plains and back to being immersed in nothingness. There's nothing really to report about this last long section of the ride. Oh, other than while filming this shot of these animals crossing this river, I learned that the alpacas here are water peruf. Peru? <laughs> At my final stop, but before my final tourist activity, I decided to visit the market and get a bite to eat. I couldn't decide between the onions, tomatoes, garlic, room temperature meat, the massive variety of fruit, or a fatal train accident waiting to happen. I discovered that the market here is actually on a train track, and as the train approaches, they fold up all their market stalls and cafes, and then reassemble them once the train has passed. I'm assuming they have a timetable? And the next thing on my timetable was my final tourist activity, Lake Titicaca and the floating islands on it. Everything on these islands is made from reeds, from the actual islands themselves to the houses, to this three-story tall flamingo. And even the boats are made from reeds as well, with quite an interesting construction technique where they just bind them together incredibly tightly to stop water getting in. And you can see here the construction of the island, which is just enormous amounts of these reeds all tightly bundled together to form floats. And apparently the islands are perpetually sinking as they rot, so you need to keep putting a fresh layer on top. And as I was here, it was time to get into the traditional spirit of things and take one of these ancient technology boats for a spin. So here I am on a traditional reed boat being pushed by a traditional Mercury 10 horsepower two-stroke outboard engine. As I hopped from one island to the other, I could see why people choose to have this life. But I still can't see why people choose to have children. And people still tell me I should have kids. The boat eventually landed on another island, and I got to look at the sights. There was um, there was a there was a lake chicken and uh, a lake a lake toilet and a lake duck. Well, actually, no, I guess that's that's just a duck. 
Um, but you know, there was a it was, it was a cool place, and there was a shop, and I uh, got to peruse inside. ¿A dónde tengo que ver? Some video. It's ah, filmar. Sí. El rojo. Eh, este. Sí, sí, yes, bueno, es automático. Bueno, sí. dale. Island life was certainly a slower pace than everywhere else, and it was quite far removed from the modern world, with many inhabitants only interaction with it coming when the extension for their guest bedroom arrived. Well, it was time to get one last look at the lake before heading back to the mainland for my last few hours in Peru. Oh look, an advert for a pet shop. Uh, yeah, n nothing, nothing to do with my dinner, no. Um, uh, right. Any parents, if you've got kids that have guinea pigs as pets, right, um, distract them now. And that's it for Peru. Next time you see Ed, he'll be in Bolivia. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more highbrow content. Hello and welcome to the soundproof editing den that I've been hiding in for the last four weeks making this video for you guys. I hope you liked it. I'm particularly happy with this video and I think it's my favourite one yet and I'm really happy with all the work that I put into getting it right. Uh, fun fact, the script for this video was 14 pages long and might get me committed to a mental asylum but it was all worth it because life's too short to take seriously. So now it is time to leave the editing den because the video's done, <laughs> which is amazing. And I've got a couple of cool things to show you. First one is, thank you so much, James Gitchell. Your PayPal donation that you sent me, I used to buy this lovely Rode microphone, which I've wanted for ages, but I just couldn't justify the cost of it. But your donation, which was very generous, I used to buy it and that has meant that all of the voiceover in this last one was nice and level and brilliant. So if you thought the voiceover in this one was uh, particularly smooth or that you could hear it particularly well, then uh, yeah, please say thank you to James. And once again, thank you from me, James. And you have now saved me at least a day's work on every video from now on because the audio levels on this are nice and constant and I don't need to keep trying to fix it in post. So that's the first awesome thing. Second awesome thing, get ready for this. Oh, there's, there's a sign that says, please buy merchandise. That's, that's strange. Um, this is really cool. I have a YouTube play button. It arrived in the post. And look, it's awesome. Oh, uh, hello. Um, yeah, this is amazing. 100,000 subscribers. I never thought I'd ever get there. So if I uh, drop the microphone, ah. so if I ever have a wall, I will be putting this on it. So thank you so much, guys. Uh, channel's been running for nine years now. And uh, yeah, 100,000 subscribers. And I'm really, really happy with that. That's awesome. So thank you very much. And uh, to anybody else that has been following the channel for quite a while, you'll have noticed that this episode was a monster, 52 minutes long, but uh, only actually took me four months to make. Um, and a month of that was in Dubai and a month was the edit. And the reason for that is because all of you guys at the end of the last video bought my lovely merchandise, such as my Ed March hoodie. There's a thin line between genius and insanity about the width of a C90 tire. And there is also my 100% cotton hoodies. Cotton hoodies, t-shirts, you're an idiot, Ed which has the same thing on, and my award-winning film that I've won four film festivals with, which, unfortunately, DVD, the format has died, but that is why it is on USB stick, and it is actually finally fully completed. These are printed on my 3D printers on the other side of the barn, and there is a HD copy of the movie on it. So, and you also get the full color page booklet, which I believe contains a genuine willy that I drew. So yes, but we'll put it together. So yes, um, so just thank you for all of this. Um, but yeah, this these videos only happen because of you guys. Um, I'm not holding you to ransom. 
the videos will still happen if you don't support the channel. Um, it just means that I've got to wait until I've saved up enough cash because this last video took four weeks to make, so I can't work for four weeks. So, um, But yeah, thank you so much for everything and this is all awesome and I'm so happy with my play button. But yeah, if you do want to help more videos happen, then the PayPal donate uh, button is on my website, c90adventures.co.uk and the oh, cock. Right, recharged my phone, so uh, I was waffling on anyway. Right, so if you do want to support the channel and help more videos happen, then the PayPal donate uh, button is on my website, c90adventures.co.uk, my PayPal email address, ed.march at c90adventures.co.uk, the shop where you can buy my award-winning film, which was from my first trip from Malaysia to UK, and uh, 72 minutes long and is on USB stick as well. Um, if you buy the DVD, you get both because um, I still think you should have something to hold for your money. And that's what she said. And yeah, that's pretty much it. So thank you so much. Um, oh, hoodies. Oh, the uh, questions before. The hoodies are 80% cotton, 20% uh, polyester. T-shirts are 100% cotton. I've gone for the really premium ones so that you can wash them like 100 times and they don't die. Um, so I've taken a hit on the profit to make sure it's actually decent stuff that lasts. So on that trip, actually, that you're watching, I actually had one of my T-shirts for the entire three years and it didn't disintegrate. So yeah, that's where we're gonna leave this. It's Christmas Eve. I've got to upload this in the next three hours so that it's ready waiting underneath people's trees on Christmas day. So, right, I gotta go. Thank you so much, guys. You've been awesome and I'll see you all soon.